Hey guys, I'm Pastor LeBrian Freen, and I'm the proud lead pastor of Belong Church Atlanta. And I want to welcome you to our YouTube page. I'm hoping and praying that something you see here helps you see God differently. Uh, we exist to be a bridge for people to experience and belong to Christ in community. And you, even watching this online, have the ability to be a part of that online community. If you want to say abreast of everything that's going on here at Belong Church, you can text Belong ATL to 94000. And that'll keep you fully in the loop with all things belong. In addition, you can follow us here on YouTube, like and subscribe. But you can also follow us on Instagram at Belong ATL and on Facebook at Belong Church Atlanta. Now, let's get ready for today's message. We're going to go to John 15 and Psalm 1 today. John 15, uh, beginning at verse 1 and Psalm 1. Last week, I did a message called All In. We're still in summer school, and I've got um, a couple pieces I want to share with you all today that's going to run right in rhythm with our word from last week. Um, that, let's just jump into it. John 15 and 1. Now, I'm reading from the English Standard Version Bible, so um, if, if you've got it on an app, you can pull it up that way. Um, or if you have a Bible with you, it may read a little bit different, but what I say and what comes on the screen should be pretty close to sync. Here's what it says. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Everybody shout more fruit. Now, y'all, I don't want to get too far into my message now, but I want you to understand that some seasons of cutting are not punishment. It's for production. Let, let, me, let me say it again. Sometimes God cutting you is not to punish you, but it's to help you produce more than you've ever produced in your life. I want to, I want to talk to a few people that are on the cutting board of life right now, that you're watching God take stuff away and it seems like it don't make sense. What worked last year ain't working this year, and you're wondering why it feels like God is stripping you. I want you to understand that there is a process called pruning, and the prune is not to kill, but it's to help you produce even more. Can I just declare this? Anything that you lost, you did not lose. Some things God let go so you could become what he's really called you to be. I don't want you to waste another day weeping about what you felt like you lost. I want you to thank God that he cut you enough so that you could produce again. Because hear me, your life is called to bear much fruit and part of that process is this. God will cut off of you what no longer serves what you're called to be so that you can produce at a higher level. I declare in Jesus' name, no more weeping over the cutting seasons. No more weeping over heaven's pruning. God is doing something in you to get you to your next and sometimes he got to do a cut to get it there got to cut you. He's got to cut you. Now, this is a dangerous, this is a dangerous declaration I'm going to ask you to make. Man, this is about to be dangerous. Take a deep breath. Breathe in, breathe out. I've already in my message. Oh, breathe in, breathe out. And I want you to shout this with me. Say, Lord. No, no, no. Shout it like you mean it. Say, Lord, cut me. Some of y'all couldn't say it. Take a deep breath. Breathe in, breathe out. Some of y'all like, nah, I ain't praying that prayer. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm going somewhere with it. I need you to shout it with me. Say, Lord, cut me. All you did was give God permission to strip away everything off of you that no longer belongs. I declare that you're not going to be a hoarder of anything in your life. You're not going to hold on to things because they served you five years ago, but they're not producing now. I want God to cut off of me everything that I don't need so I can fully become everything he's called me to be. And of removing what you thought you needed to prove to you you didn't need it as bad as you thought you did. Woo! You didn't need it nearly as bad as you thought you did. Verse 3. Already you are clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I am him. He it is that bears much fruit. Everybody shout much fruit. 
man, y'all, I don't know why I'm going here, but I, I really feel deep in my heart that this is about to be your most productive season in the last try. I don't know who this is for, and I'm not even trying to go hear my message, but I feel like you're about to hit your most productive momentum stage that you've had in the last five years. God's about to help you produce at a higher level. He's about to expand your capacity because he's getting the waste out of the way so that you can fully be everything you were called to be. Woo. You're, you're about to produce. You're about to grow. You're about to go. You're about to watch it happen quicker than you thought. Prayers that you were praying 10 years ago are going to feel like all of a sudden they're starting to manifest. You're about to watch the hand of God take you into a high production season. Oh, Father, and I'm praying that as they produce at a higher level, staff them so that they don't fall short. Send the right help to hold them up and never let them think that they did it outside of you. Woo. Anything my life produces is going to produce because I was connected in the right place. So I, abide. I abide in him. Lord, 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 I'm trying not to get him a message yet, but I abide in him. It means that on my bad days, I'm sticking beside him. On my challenging days, I'm sticking beside him. When everything and everybody around me getting on my nerves, I'm still going to find a space to worship him. I'm not going to leave him no matter what. If I shout abide, abide, abide. to bear much fruit for apart from me you can do you can do nothing and if anyone does not abide in me he's thrown away like a branch and withers and the branches are gathered thrown into the fire and burned but if you abide in me and my words abide in you ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Y'all, y'all, I'm going to move. But what, what the scripture just gave you permission with is this. That if you stick beside him and stay connected, there will be a place of request that's always going to get a response. I'm telling you. You will ask what you wish and you will watch the father produce it sometimes faster than you can dream about it. It's going to it's going to come to pass. Woo! Can y'all just shout that it will come to pass? There are some of you that have been praying some prayers. I just want to declare it will come to pass. There are some of you that have been making requests already. I want to declare it will come to pass. Everything that God has said and promised, he's going to bring it into full maturation. It will. It's going to come to pass. You just got to stay. You got to abide. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. And if you keep my commandments, you'll abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I've spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. may have a bad bad day. I may have a bad season. But the one thing the enemy cannot steal from me ever again is my joy. It, it don't mean, joy don't mean that everything is going my way. It simply means I know the one that's going to turn the tide in the right time. I, can somebody just say that I still have joy? I I still, it feels like my world is crashing in right now. But when I remember this, I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. I still, I still got my joy. The one thing that I'm going to let remain and I'm going to be full in is full of joy. Psalm 1, let me read this real quick. I just have three points in this message and an illustration. I'm going to be out the way. Psalm 1 says, oh the joys of those who do, who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. 
person, you're about to prosper. Everything. You're about to prosper. And everything you do, you're about to prosper. Man, man, man. Turn to the other side. Just tell them you're about to prosper. Your, your marriage is about to prosper. Your job is about to prosper. Your ministry is about to prosper. Your relationships are about to prosper. Everything you set your hand to do, it's about to prosper. May, may you see the prosperity of God in all of us. This, this message today is a real simple one. I'm calling it planted. Everybody shout planted. The premise of this is very simple. If you find yourself rooted in him and rooted in the places where he's called you to be, you're going to grow to become everything he created you to be. But you will not unplant yourself out of the will of God and out of the place he's called and created your life to be. Right? Um, so today's message, uh, it starts with a very simple illustration. And all of you all are about to be a part of that illustration. Everybody. Right? When y'all walked in today, um, there should have been an opportunity for everyone to get a sunflower seed. Raise your hand if you got a sunflower seed when you came in. Raise it high. All right, so just about. All right, put your hands down. All right. Raise your hand if you did not get a sunflower seed. Y'all came through the back door. That's y'all. Sorry. Y'all just <laughs> slipped in the wrong way. All right. Now, for everybody that did get a sunflower seed, raise your hand if you still got it. All right. Um, now, go ahead. Put your hands down. Raise your hand. Let's be, just be honest with me. Ra raise your hand if you've lost your sunflower seed. One, two. Only two. Everybody else, hold your sunflower seed real high. Let, let me just tell you all, I'm proud of y'all. I was... I was really expecting about half of y'all to lose it somewhere in worship. Well, congratulations for holding on to it. Now, for, for those that lost it, raise your hand one more time. Y'all, the couple hands that lost, if y'all can, just, just put, put a sunflower seed in your hand. All right. Here, here's how I want to start this message. The way that we handle our purpose is much like the way you just handled the seed. When God calls us to do big things, it doesn't start out in big form. Everything he calls us to be and do starts as a seed. And often what happens when something is in seed form, we mismanage it because it doesn't look like what it's yet going to be. And any time we mismanage the seed of God's purpose in our lives, we miss the opportunity to see the beauty and the fruitfulness if we'll simply plant it in the right place. Now, um, for those of you that didn't lose it, let me just ask this. How many of y'all put it in your pocket or your purse? Throw your hand up. Okay. How many of y'all kept it in your hand the whole time? No, but two, two, three, four, five, six, uh, ten of y'all. All right, here we go. This next part of this. I think it's interesting where we place seed when we don't know what to do with it yet. And often, instead of keeping it in our hand, we'll put it in a place we call safe, but doesn't have the ability to produce either. <sighs> All right, here we go. I want you to make up your mind today that you are no longer going to live in the safe places of purpose. But you're going to allow yourself to be planted in what may seem like dangerous moments or dangerous territory if God has called you to it. Matter of fact, just tell one person, no more safety. No more playing it safe. Some of you all are only missing opportunities because you fear what will happen if you put that seed in the ground so that it can produce something else. But I want to declare over you that if you plant yourself where God has called and created you to be, you're about to watch God make some stuff spring up out of the ground quicker than you expected. Many of us are holding seed, and while we hold seed, we're choking it. We're choking out of us what God created us to be. Because, again, we simply don't know how or where to manage it just yet. I want to declare you're not going to be the one that stops what God created for you to be and become from coming to fruition because you held it too close. When you hold it too close, what you're simply saying is, I only trust me with this. 
How many of y'all have God ever invited someone to walk, walk alongside you and partner with you? And you said, you know what, don't worry about it, I got it, I can handle it. You know what I mean? Like you've been afraid to put in. Y'all, let, 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 let me make everybody feel safe. It happened to me just this week, just this week. Uh, we're in the process of making uh, a family transition. It's been going on for about six weeks. And, and every time, I had probably three, four, five people call and ask me, hey, what can I do to help? Do you need any help? And probably three times, I didn't even respond. I didn't respond because I couldn't figure out what I needed help with, even though I knew I needed help. Has anybody ever been in that place in life? Like, you know you need something but you haven't figured out how to articulate what it is that you need yet. So rather than inviting somebody into a space that is going to possibly uh, just waste their time, you instead just kind of hold it close. But then yesterday afternoon, I'm in the midst of moving, and I had two people just pop up on me because everybody needs somebody that can just pop up on you out of nowhere to say, you know what, however you need me to help or serve, I'm willing to help it because I don't want you to choke out of you what, what you're called and created to be. I'm praying that God sends you the right help just to show up. All right. All of this matters because right now you're holding a seed, but you're also living a seed. Your life is a seed. And what God is wondering, what I'm looking to see out of you, is are you planted in the right places to produce out what God called and created you to be and do? Has your life and your purpose been planted in a place where it can produce? Or have you been busy being planted for a month, uprooting yourself and replanting yourself in spaces that God never called you to be? As easy as it is to get planted, it's also easy to uproot yourself. How many of you all have ever left the season too soon? Just raise your hand. Just make the whole, make the whole room feel safe. How many of y'all have ever left a season, a job too quick, a relationship too quick, because you were frustrated with what you weren't seeing, you uprooted yourself? What God is saying to you now that is if you'll get planted, I know how to cut what you no longer need. I know how to get out of your life what needs to get out of your life. But you can't leave me, and you can't leave what I've called you to. you got to trust me to do the cut. Okay? But everybody say, stay planted, stay planted. Now, now my best story for this, um, y'all, I grew up on a farm, and I, I, I love to feel like I'm a city boy, but the truth is I literally grew up around tractors, cattle, <laughs> pigs, hogs, if you will. My granddaddy had bulls and chickens, and my dad, every summer or every spring, would in, the, in our backyard, he would plant this watermelon patch, right? He would, he would do a, a couple of a rows of watermelon in our, in our backyard, in, our, in his garden. And one season, once the watermelon came out, we took one into the house, bust it open, and I said, I'm going to do what I saw my daddy do. I'm going to take one of these seeds, and I'm going to put this seed in the ground. And I put that seed in the ground, and I, I, I made it, it was going to be my life mission to plant and to grow a watermelon. The issue is, after one week, I didn't see anything come out of that watermelon, so I dug that watermelon seed up and just threw it in the trash. It didn't produce at the speed that I desired. And so when I didn't see production on my time schedule, I realized or I thought it was a waste. But the truth is, the watermelon was still in the sea. It just wasn't time for it to produce yet. What's in you is going to be in you. You just got to stay planted long enough so that it can come forward. All right? Now, I'm going to show you all this a couple different ways. Number one, let me give you all point one, uh, and I want to uh, fully illustrate this. Everything planted must be pruned. Everybody shout pruned. Now, the word pruned in the Greek is kathairo. It means purging by removing undesirable elements. Right. What God does, you can put it back. What God does when he's called you to be planted is he doesn't plant you without pruning you. There will be moments where God takes off of you stuff you thought you needed just to help you produce at a higher level. How many of you all in the last 12 months, God has taken away something from you you really thought you needed? Just lift your hand really high. 
like you were banking on it. It could be money. It could be a job. It could be a relationship. But like you really thought you needed it, and then God cut it away. All right, if it didn't happen in the last 12 months, how many of y'all in the last three years, God has taken away something you thought you needed? It was like, now, now God, please. God, why? And the truth is, when we become too dependent on other things, God will cut them to prove to us that our growth is not connected to who we're connected to. Our growth is connected to being connected to him. Here's how Jesus teaches it. This is, this is Jesus' final illustration, final uh, life illustration to his disciples before he departs. He says, I am uh, the true vine, simply to say, Everything else you've ever connected yourself with that felt like it was helping you get ahead was an idol. Your life is only going to grow because you're connected to the right source. My life is not going to produce because somebody put me on. My life is going to produce because God built the stage and God is the one who put me on. Matter of fact, I don't have to beg for people to open doors. I know the door himself. I know the one that opens the right doors in the right season and the right moment. But what God will do, he'll prove to you, listen, every other bond that you've attached yourself to was an idol. I am the only way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the only way. So if I'm connected to God, God will send everything that I need. As a matter of fact, I need y'all to just to believe this. You already have everything you need. No, I don't think y'all heard me. I said you already have everything that you need. If you've got him, you've got more than enough. On, on this stage, I've got um, four, four, four le several levels, several levels of plants. Everybody shout prune, 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 prune. Um, Y'all, last night I went into Walmart, and I had no idea that Walmart would be the place where plants go to die. I didn't know that. No, <laughs> Nobody ever told me that Walmart was the plant cemetery. I had no clue. I had, they got a whole garden and outdoor section. And y'all, everything out there dead. I need you to understand. It, it, everything out that door was on life support. I'm like, this is not where the message was supposed to go, but this is where the message is about to go. Because when you're growing, you got to be careful who's caring for you. Just because it's big doesn't mean it has the capability of caring for you. And there are spaces when you're growing and going, you want to be sure. Everybody say, I'm in the right hands. You want to be sure you're in the right hands. So, so y'all, um, if you just look at this, what type of plant would you all think this is? Somebody said a dead one. Um, this is a rose bush. And some of y'all like, Ey! because it doesn't look like what it's supposed to be. It's rooted. It's in the dirt. It just ain't been watered in a few weeks. Months, possibly. And it looks like everything in it is on the verge of death. But you do know that if you just take away some of the dead leaves, get off what's no longer necessary with a little bit of water. I'm not going to water it anymore because I'm making a mess. With a little bit of water, what was once dead can come to life again. This is where, where Jesus is talking about you, you've been pruned and then you're clean. It's talking about the word of God washing over you. Here's what I want you to understand. That the word of God has the ability to bring everything back to life again if you will allow yourself to be washed in the word. So, like, look, even, even here. This one looks like it's got a little bit more life, but it's still real dry too. And it's got, it's got some dead pieces. Now, Bria, I trust you. 
will, will, you, will you remove some of the dead things? Ooh, not that one. Not that one. Not that one either. Not that one either. Ah, I, I, I'm still planning to do something with that one. Uh, yeah, that one was on the floor. It's okay. You can have that. You can have that. Oh, that's good. Ooh, ooh, ooh. y'all have ever found yourself moving yourself out of God's pruning process? Because it wasn't comfortable. Come back, Bria. Because it wasn't comfortable. When God got ready to pull it away, you tried to reattach yourself to it. Here we go. Let's bring it home. How many relationships did God call you out of that you stayed because the soul was tied but not your purpose? How many, how many jobs did you stay at because they paid good money but it was draining all your energy? How many times did you find yourself staying in stuff that was no longer producing, was dead, and was ready to be stripped away, but because it was convenient, you found yourself staying in it anyway? You've got to give God the vine dresser permission to cut off everything that doesn't belong. Uh, go ahead. You can have it. It don't mean it doesn't hurt when he's pruning. But it means if he prunes me, I'm about to produce at an even greater level. How many of you all this summer have found yourself being pruned by God? Like literally, you, you have found yourself saying, God, I don't know why one plus one used to equal two, but now one plus one is equaling negative 15. I don't, it don't make sense. But I trust that if you're taking it away, go ahead. Take it away. Take it quick before I take it back. Has that been anybody's prayer, Lord God? Do this quick. Before, if, you, if, you, if, if it's got to go, make it go now. I don't, I don't need a three-month process. If you're going to take it, take it right now, right? Has that been anybody's prayer? Like, God, give it to me in a dream. And if, you, if I dream it, I, it's got to go right now. God, make them do something real dumb this week so I know that's my sign. How many of y'all have ever God? God, just give me a sign. If they jump stupid today, that's my sign. I'm going to get out as quick as possible, right? Listen, she only took off what was dead, even though some of the leaves were still bruised. Bruised don't mean there's still not life in it. So, some of you all have survived some heavy life bruising. And bruising is just a sign that there's still life on the inside of you. I just need God to take away everything that's not producing at the level it should and everywhere where I've been dry I just need him to water me again meaning that if I allow the word of God to get on the inside of me the word of God is going to reveal to me everything that I no longer need How many of y'all have just ever opened your Bible to a scripture one day and just said, God, lead me? And when God led you, it led to you having to cut some stuff off. It led to you having to do a little bit of self-reflection. It led to you having to say, oh, okay, God, you really wanted me to deal with me today. Now, here's the other part of this. This, this container is completely empty, right? It's completely empty. Here's the part pre-pruned. Nothing but dirt, nothing but soil. The part that we don't talk enough about is that part of being planted, I got a sunflower seed too, is that at some point in order to be planted, you're going to have to get dirty. <laughs> in order... For God to plant you, you never get planted in clean spaces. There's nothing beautiful about dirt except it becomes the fertilizer to make the seed come out. What places have you avoided because you felt like they were too dirty for what you were called to? 
And the truth is, God was trying to plant you in a place that made you very uncomfortable so that something beautiful could come out of you. Everybody don't start off in millionaire status. How many of y'all know what it's like to get it out the mud, literally, to have to raise yourself up? You came from nothing, but you found yourself being raised up out of the midst of nothing to produce something beautiful. It's because God often plants beautiful purposes in very dirty places. But he'll do it to bring about or to bring out the harvest that your life is actually called to produce. What is God trying to do in you now that you're avoiding doing because it feels like you'll have to start all over again? <laughs> what, what are you delaying on because it feels like you have to start from the beginning all over again? What if you said, God, I've already hit this level of success. This is going to feel like a reset and I don't want to start over again. And the truth is, the beauty of what you're about to produce is going to happen because you allowed him to replant you in another space. What have you been telling God no to? Because it's going to cause you to have to start over again. What have you been fearful of? Because it was going to make your life have to reset and be replanted. What has God been calling you to become? that you've been avoiding simply because of the sacrifice it was going to take in order for you to become it. I would dare to say that for some of you, if you would let God replant you in the right place, you're about to see the fruitfulness of God in every area of your life. So, so, so number one, if, if you really want to be planted, you've got to be willing to be pruned. What is God trying to cut off of you? What is God trying to take away from you? What is God trying to clean out of you? As a matter of fact, the way, the way the ancient text, the way the Greek really interprets this, it really means the, the process of pruning and cleaning is that he wants your life to be without mixture. All, all, all it means is he doesn't want anything else to be able to take credit for what he's created you to be. He doesn't want there to be any mixture. He never wants another entity to be able to take credit for what he breathed in you from the beginning of time. So God, pruning is to prevent mixture. He wants to be sure that when you fully become everything you're called and created to be, the only one that gets the glory and the only one that gets the honor, it won't be an educational facility. It will be the God that allowed the door to open for you to even get there. Number one, everybody shout prune. prune. All right, so in order to be planted, you've got to be willing to be pruned. Number two, put number two up. Everything planted must be pruned, number one. Everything planted must stay in position. As, as tempting as it may be, you've got to be willing to stay where God sends you. As tempting as it may be to go in other directions, you've got to be willing to stay wherever God sends. And as long as God has done the, the sending, I've got to be the one that does the staying. Now, how many of you all have ever felt the itch to transition out of seasons too soon? Y'all, I'm in, I'm in one right now. We're, we're in the process of moving right now, and I'm like, you know what? God, I'm just going to leave all this stuff here, and it's just going to be what it's going to be. So I'm ready to get into my next thing. You know, I'm, re I'm ready. I'm literally ready to do the next thing. But the truth is, You've got to be sure that you properly steward and stay in position even when it gets difficult. Because I've watched God make beautiful things happen out of difficult seasons. How many of you all have survived a difficult season just in this last 12 months? And now on the other side of it, you can look back over your shoulder like, man, I hated it when it started. But I'm grateful that God took me that way and that I, I stayed in position, right? You, you've got to be willing to stay planted. Here, here's what the scripture says. It says that if you abide with me, all that word interpreted abide, all it means is stick close by, stay apart, stay connected. In every season, in every transition of your life, what makes you produce high is who you stick beside. 
And some of us have stuck beside what seemed like it was serving us best and not the God that actually sent us into the place. But he says, if you abide in me, if you, matter of fact, Antonio, come here. Sit closer. 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 A little bit closer. <laughs> now you ain't gonna move me out the way. I'm God in this situation. It ain't a way you can come too close, and I'm not. But listen, he says. If you, if you abide, if you stick close by me, staying close by me, it says, and my word abides in you, you're going to produce much fruit. Woo, y'all. This is why this 21 days is about to be so important. I believe God is calling everyone in this room into a deeper level, a closer proximity to him. There's not a place where you're going to get too close. But there is a place where you're going to get so close, you're going to forget about yourself and you're going to find him. The truth of life and purpose is not how much money I make. It's how much I can deny myself so the king of glory can be revealed in me. The truth of purpose is not how many promotions I can get and not how many people know my name and not how many stages I can stand on. The truth of life is how close have I walked with him so that his life is revealed in everything I'm called to be and do. But you got to come close. Just go over there this way for a second. Some of us have settled for being in the area with him, but not being in position with him. So we've said, as long as I make it to church two Sundays after a month, as long as I open my Bible app so my streak don't break, Some of y'all like, I, I just can't lose my day. I'm on. I got 23 days in a row. I can't, I can't lose this now. I got 306. I got to make it the whole year. You know, as, as long as I just open the app. Open it, but there's no depth to it. So we, we've settled for being in the area, being in proximity, but not being in relationship. That's why church becomes like a drug. It gives you a fix, but it don't fix you. What fixes us is being close enough to him for him to show us who we are because we're planted in him. Come back, Antonio. Go away, Antonio. <laughs> Come back, Antonio. Go away, Antonio. Come back, Antonio. Sunday morning, I'm headed to church. I'm going to worship with everything I've got. Go away, Antonio. It is Monday, and they're going to get it on site. <laughs> it is Tuesday, and everybody is already on my nerves. It is Wednesday, and I'm ready to nook if you. See, look at y'all. Look at y'all. Look. <laughs> Come back, Antonio. What God is calling you to is a level of sameness and oneness. <laughs> because when I'm planted in him, my life only produces what comes out of him. My, my, woo, y'all, hear me. Your, your life is not going to bear strange fruit. Meaning, I call myself a Christian, but the fruit it bears looks like everything but. It, it says... If I abide in him, his word abides in me. I'm going to produce, everybody shout, much fruit. What, what Jesus is telling his disciples is that his desire is for them to prosper. <laughs> and I'm not just talking about financial prosperity. I'm talking about life prosperity. There should be fruit that remains. Matter of fact, man. No one should die and not have fruit that remains. 
the end of my life may be the end of this life, but it's not the end of my fruit. Your fruit should still reproduce even after you've breathed your last breath because I abided in him. I got close. I got as close as I could. So when they cut me off on 85, 75, 20, 400, 316, whatever direction you're coming from. When they cut me off, I ain't going to speed up to steer them down. And I'm talking to me now. I ain't talking about, I ain't going to speed up so I can get beside like, who is? Anybody just been tempted? Just, no, anybody did it this week. Let's be honest. Uh, I'm going to abide. That, that when, they, when they get on my nerves, on my job, I'm going to journal about my frustration, but I ain't going to send that email. How many of y'all know how to professionally read people? Where are my professional readers at? Like, per my last email. <laughs> read you, but I'm going to keep it high level. Per my last email. Per our last meeting two weeks ago. Yeah. I'm going to stay in position. Because hear me, when you're on the brink of producing, that's when the enemy shows up to try to make you get out of position. When your life is about to bear fruit, that is typically when you find yourself under the greatest attack. I have watched Fanika give birth four times, and she has said um, it, with just about every one of them, maybe with the exception of one, the difficulty was not the carry. The difficulty was the push. It was the pressure before the birthing. And what the enemy will do is try to make you abort your position right before you're about to produce something great. But I want to declare in Jesus' name, no one under the sound of my voice is going to uproot themselves. You are going to find yourself staying even when it feels uncomfortable. You're going to abide and stay with God even when it seems like it don't make sense. You're going, just tell one neighbor, stay in position. Stay. I know it's tempting to separate it. But if you stay, the fruit is in the stay. Go ahead, Tony. Antonio, come back. How many of y'all have heard God calling you back? And you're like, I've been with you. And he says, I need you closer. How many of y'all have like, you know, God, we've been in fellowship. It's like, I appreciate what you've been doing, but there's more. Am I talking to anybody just in the last couple? Like, I, I appreciate what, what you're saying, but I'm calling you to more. I'm trying to change your position, so I need you to stay in position. I'm trying to get you to your next. So there are moments I just need you to be still. Just stay in position. Antonio, I don't know what door God's about to open next. I don't know what's about to happen before 2024 comes to a close. But I hear the Spirit of God saying, I have seen your heart. I have seen your hand. I've seen how you have served even when it didn't make sense. I have seen what you've given to others that didn't have the ability to even produce it back. Father, I thank you even now that because Antonio was willing to stay in position with you, that you produce a hundredfold harvest in his business. Let his business see your hand at work before December 2024 comes to a close. I declare that because he's been planted, because he stayed when he wanted to depart, even when others called him away, that because he stuck with you, I declare his life is going to see the full measure that it should be producing in Jesus' name. The barren season will not break him. What seems like it's not manifesting 
doesn't get will not discourage him. He's going to see the hand of God at work simply because he stayed planted in Jesus' name. Just tell one person, stay in position. I'm done. Number point three, stay in position. Here's my last point, point three. Thank you. You can go now. For real. For real. Everything planted will produce. It's real easy. Guys, it don't have to be big to be production. Some of you all are waiting for your life to look like this. So you're discounting the fact that it's already in production. It doesn't have to be big to be impactful. And no one else has to notice it for it to be needed. You're waiting for God to do the big grandiose so you won't even start in the small stages. But guess what? This plant is already in full bloom. It, it's pink. It looks pretty, but it's also a cactus. If you touch it, it's going to prick you. Because his aim now is to protect what's grown. It's big. It's, it's not big, but it's able to protect and preserve the beauty that you see. just be one. Don't discount the one because they didn't show up the way that you thought it should. Be grateful that in this season of what God's called me to be, it don't have to be much to be effective. As long as I'm doing what God has called and created me to do, I gotta stay planted. But if you stay planted, you're going to produce. Very simple close to this. I'm believing your life is about to produce at new levels. I believe for some of you, business is about to explode in a brand new way. I believe for some of you, opportunities are about to come that you cannot say no to. I believe for some of you, you're about to see the hand of God at work and everything he built you to do in a brand new way. And it's not going to happen because you're gifted. It's going to happen because you're planted. Not planted in a church, but planted in him. Yeah. The church is the byproduct product of it. I want you to understand, I'm not preaching church to you. I'm preaching God to you. I want you to be planted in him. This has nothing to do that if you go to an AME church up the street or a Catholic church down the road. It has nothing to do with the place where you choose to worship. It has everything to do with the fact that no matter where I am, I'm not leaving him not leaving him. I am the church. I'm not leaving him. Be planted. Be stable. Don't uproot yourself. Don't move too soon because your life is called to produce. And I'm believing that in this next phase of your life, you're about to produce at a brand new level. Everybody on your feet real quick. I'm going to do it like this. If you've been in a season called barrenness, your life hadn't produced any fruit, and you feel like you're not seeing anything you're supposed to see, just lift your hand real quick. Like, it feels like I'm living, I'm existing, but I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's, I don't know what's going on. It feels like, you know, I, I'm, it just feels barren. It feels barren. Just lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Father, for every barren heart in this room, I thank you that you're about to give them strategy. You're about to give them insight. And over these next 21 days, you're about to speak to their heart and life in a brand new way.
so that they see that even in their low moments and low seasons, you're the God that was working it out. I declare that they're not going to give up on themselves and they're not going to give up on you even though it feels like it's not happening the way they thought it should. Matter of fact, they're not going to compare their journey to anyone else's. They're not going to compare their story to anyone else's. But they're about to seek you with a greater tenacity so that they can see what it is you've called and created them to be. I declare in Jesus' name the season called barrenness is coming to a close and they're about to see your hand at work and all they were called and created created to be in Jesus' name. How many of you all feel like you've, you've been producing, but you feel like you can do more? Just lift your hands. 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 I know I can do more. I'm accomplishing some stuff, but I don't feel satisfied. I'm doing some stuff, but I don't feel full. Man, for some of y'all, y'all going to stay in position, but God's just about to pivot you. I don't know who this part is for. God's about to just give you a little pivot in a different direction. It's not that you've been doing the wrong thing. You may just be doing it in the wrong space. And he's going to pivot it in another direction. It's not that you've lost sight of him and that you're not planted in him. He's just about to pivot you. A small pivot. Lift those hands real quick. Father, I thank you for those that feel like there's more in them to produce. That the spirit of discouragement will not overtake them. I declare in Jesus' name, they're not going to feel like they're just walking around the mountain, going through cycles, but not seeing your hand at work. Now, Father, I pray that you open up their eyes to brand new opportunities, brand new doors, brand new strength. I pray that you let them see in a new way that you're the God that's going to position them appropriately to produce even more than what they've been doing. I declare now that they will not be aggravated by what they haven't seen seen yet, but they will stand in hope and in prayer and in aspiration for you to do your next big thing in and through their lives. May they produce their next place of harvest in a brand new way. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, for those of you that feel like your life is already producing pretty well, just lift your hands. Lift your hands. Thank you. Anybody else? You feel like my life's doing, I'm producing pretty well. I I don't mind more, but I feel like I'm producing pretty well. I see a, little, a, a couple hands. And those hands I see, I want you to invite God in for the next cut. We, we already declared it. I want to pray it real quick. Father, for those that have already been producing at a high level, I'm asking you today, prune them again. Don't let any mixture interfere with what it is you've called and created them to be into. Cut away everything that doesn't reflect who you are so that they can see your hand at work in all they were called and created to be. Let them abide in you and because they abide in you, cut away every branch that's not producing. Throw it into fire so we don't return to it so that we can see your fruitfulness in every moment and every season of our lives. We believe that to be so in Jesus' name. Now, everybody that's just making up their mind, no matter what season you're in, I'm just going to stay planted. Lift your hands real quick. Father, thank you today that across this sanctuary, we are making a corporate decision that we're sticking beside you. Life comes, challenges come, changes come, but we've made up our mind that no matter what hits us, nothing is going to separate us from the love of God. So this Sunday morning, our corporate decision is we are planted in you. We are staying with you. Your word declares that we will bear fruit in the right season, that you will plant us by the rivers of living water and that we would produce I declare in Jesus name that every purpose under the sound of my voice found themselves planted in the purpose of God that they may produce everything they were born for I declare that there will be no purpose that goes to the grave unfulfilled I declare there will be no book that goes to the grave unwritten I declare there will be no plan that that was supposed to come to fruition that could not because we were out of your will but father today focus us again refresh us again revive us again center us again that we might produce the harvest that you have called our lives to be and become
We declare we are in production season and we will bear much fruit in Jesus' name. If you believe your life is about to produce again, can you give God the greatest shout of praise you can find? You are called to produce. Y'all hear me, I'm getting out the way. You are not going to apologize again for not producing greatly. Or you're not going to apologize to people because your life is producing more than theirs. You're going to do everything God's called you to do. Because you stayed in the planting of the Lord. You're going to produce everything God created and called your life to be and become. I'm believing it to be so. And I'm telling you, over these next 21 days, as we fast and pray as a church, God's about to revive and refresh some dreams. Man, some stuff that you thought he was finished with, he's about to show you. I ain't done with it yet. And there's more fruit that I'm going to bring out of it. Your life is called to produce. You're going to produce at a high level. And you're going to do everything God's called and created you to be and do. If you believe that, can you give him one more great big hand clap of praise?